Good morning, Pastor Jerry Castleman from Shepherd's Heart Fellowship Church. It is nice to be with you this morning. And on a rainy day as it is, we're talking about uh, times like these. There's a song that comes to my mind that we sang as children in the church in times like these. We need a Savior. I don't know about times in your life. I know about times in my life. I know about with you times in the world. Uh, we see some good times and we see troubled times in the world. Uh, we each have our personal times as well. But the psalm before us, we're going to the book of Psalms, doing a, a, a mini-series in Psalms. Uh, this psalm is uh, a Psalm 46, often used in a funeral setting, but also gives us a challenge to our everyday personal Christian lives, knowing that uh, that we need a Savior and that in times like these, rather personal or, or worldwide, we really do need God in our world. After all, it's His world and we need Him in it. Well, the passage of Psalm 46 deals with the need to, to know him, have him, and have his shepherding over our lives. The psalm is written by a, a very dear uh, beloved person of God, King David himself, who was um, a young shepherd boy, called out from the shepherd field, and made king over all Israel after King Saul. The time would be about 1,000 before Christ came into the world. And a lot of prophecy comes out of David's uh, scriptures and that he, some that he had written, and by the way, he had written more than half of the book of Psalms. So he comes out and prophesies, along with many great prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah, of the coming of the Messiah, the shepherd over the whole world, Jesus Christ himself. In this passage, uh, David pens, and this is by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is um, uh, authorized and signatured by God Himself through the very Spirit of the Holy Spirit, through the through the human spirit of David, as he writes and says, "God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in the time of trouble or in trouble." Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Could you imagine that type of chaotic world? A world where the mountains are quaking and the water, as of the water at the bottom of a great falls, is foaming. And can you see it? the water falling to the bottom of the fall where it foams and there's a clutter there and it seems to be so violent there where the water, the rough water off the falls hits the lower levels of water. Could you see how chaotic that might be? And the mountains quaking with an earthquake as if to be angry and to be quivering in fear and contempt and all of nature breaking loose. Sometimes that's the way it is in life, our personal lives, our, even our Christian life with the, the fears of the world, the trials of the world, uh, the troubles, the, the uh, crisis we go through with, with uh, uh, failed relationships, with uh, death of a, of a loved one, and all the things we could think of that do happen in this world. So we're not here to think about all those things, though they do happen. We're here to think of something more powerful, more true, and, and uh, more significant in our lives over all the dark powers and wrong things that could happen in this world, in today's world. So we're looking at God's sovereignty, God's sovereignty over and in, but ensures our security. We can have security. We can have security over all the 
the uh, chaotic, the crisis, the, the troubles, the darkness, uh, even the darkness of hell, even the darkness of Satan's attempt. Uh, we can have the power, the very presence of God over all these things. David writes uh, how God is our refuge in Psalm 46, 1. He's our refuge and our strength. So God is like a, a high fortress by the study of that word, fortress or refuge. He's like a high fort and he's the high tower over all of our problems, over anything that we could create, that even things which we had part in, creating trouble, creating crisis, bringing things upon ourselves, even with those things, that if we could stay true to God, and if we would do that and come back to God, uh, it's one thing to have God as our refuge, our high fortress, our high power, when we're not living with him, but it's another thing, when we are living with him, how much we need God is our refuge and our strength. So even in situations, uh, and wouldn't it mean uh, to be true that God is our power if we are staying true and with him, living with him, abiding by him, keeping his great commandments, and keeping all the desires of his heart, that, that uh, isn't it true that we often, we still live in a world that has been tainted uh, by trouble. And so, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust. It rains on everybody. But, you know, we have God's protection in troubled times. God has promised to stay with us for those who are true. And he has promised uh, to be a strength, a refuge and strength, a high tower. And out of that out of that high tower of God in our lives, his strength becomes his strength through us as we trust and rely upon him, even in our darkest hour. So God is our refuge and strength in all of our times. He wants to be the God of our joy. He wants to be the God of our sorrow uh, or over our sorrow. So he wants to be over every emotion, every, every joy or sadness. He wants to be over that. So he's not just the God, refuge, God of strength over those great times when life is so joyous or joyful. But he's also the God, the living God over our sad times, our troubled times. So even when those mountains are quaking and they are surging, uh, the writer David says, uh, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The, the waters roar and foam like a great waterfall at the bottom where it hits the, the other water. That anger, it's like an angry world. It's like an angry thing coming at us, angry things coming at us almost every day. Could you imagine what it would be like? And some of you, uh, some of us may be uh, going through times like that when the world just will not let us go. The anger, the trouble, the depression, discouragement, and it just seems like we can never get anything done that's good. But the writer, David, and through the Holy Spirit says that God is our refuge and our strength, even in those troubled times, even in all the anger the world could muster at us. One day, the great army of Sennacherib, a great military man out of the area called, uh, called Iraq and Iran, back, back in the Old Testament, came at Israel. They traveled far because they were conquering the world. And one of the strongholds was Israel, or specifically Judea, or the land of Judah. That would be the great city of Jerusalem. And there, a great king, one of the great kings of Judah, uh, Hezekiah, was king. And uh, 185, 
thousand men, enemy men, coming to conquer Judah, take over the land of God's people, to, to destroy them, kill them, murder them, take them into bondage, and, and destroy their land, a land that God had given them. On the night before this was to take place, the whole 185,000 military enemy men were encamped outside of Jerusalem, ready to take over the great city of God, Jerusalem. In the morning, when the Israelites uh, uh, came, uh, woke up and expected warfare that day, they looked out through the city gates and the walls and over the walls and saw what looked like the enemy sleeping on the ground. After a while, they began to investigate and they discovered that 185,000 men were lying dead on the ground. That would be, my friend, a movement of God. That would be God making his move for his people. You know, God still does that if we are his people. He'll do that in his world. It, it doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't man, matter uh, who's for him, who's against him. God is the protector of his people. And though we do run into situations and it doesn't seem like we always have God's protection. Stay true to God. He is the protector of his people. David continues to write as he says, God's presence is our security. First, we said that God's protection is our security, his protection. Now we're referring to his presence. God's presence is our security. David writes in verse 4 of Psalm 46 and verse 4, that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. All God does is lift his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's uh, verses 4 through 7. And David continues to say, not only is God our protector, but God, God's presence is our security. He says that there is a river. I often like to refer to that river as Jesus Christ himself. He is the son of God. He is of the same essence of God. And he is the savior of the world, the savior of sin, of our sins. And our master who walks on the sea who calms the storms, who comes into every one of our critical situations and gives us peace and comfort even while we endure the raging sea. And so David says that this river is our calmness, the river of God. And out of this river of God, David says that there are streams that make glad the city of God. Right now in heaven, uh, the city of God is reigning. Jesus Christ is enthroned in the essence of the Father as the Father God, pouring out his Holy Spirit. And out of the great river, the river of God, flowing through heaven and or through the person of Jesus Christ, there are streams coming out of this river. And those streams are in, in a number of, of uh, illustrations, such as he, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a stream of God. The Holy Spirit is the essence of God, as Christ Jesus is of the essence of God, the three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by the way, when David says God, he's using the Hebrew term Elohim, meaning Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And out of this great river, the river of God, there are streams that are just making glad that great city of God in heaven. And that city according to Revelations 22, will flow down in the, in the last day, when, when the last day of the Lord, after the rapture, after the millennium, in the book of Revelations, what will happen? Uh, John writes about a great city descending down upon the earth and becomes, when Christ puts one foot on Jerusalem, the other foot on the Mount of Olives, 
and out of Christ comes the great streams of the river of God flowing to all humanity, and we will live in that city for eternity. David says that his presence is our security. His calmness, the river is a calmness for us. There is calmness in his presence. There is calmness even when the mountains are quaking and the river is foaming. And so the Lord Almighty is with us. The great fortress, the high tower, God himself is the strength of our faith and our belief. God's presence. So we have God's protection. We have God's presence. We also have, David said, God's preeminence. And this preeminence, finally, Dave talks, David talks about and writes, beginning with verse 8. David says, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. David now says that God's preeminence is our security. This is uh, the only living God for all times, all creation, over the universe, over everything that is. It's all about God's, God's existence, the one true living God. And David the writer says, look at what God has done. Look upon the earth of the past, the wars, the, the times, the troubles, and, and do a study. Uh, look into these things, what God has done in the past. It's a, it's a historical past. It's, it's, the, it's the cross on Mount Calvary the historical fact of the cross. It's like the historical reality of, of uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look into these things. Look into the things how God has, has uh, caused wars to cease and how God has enabled uh, uh, armies of Christianity to march up against some of the greatest evil armies of all time and win the battle for God. So David says, look at what God has done. Look what he has done in your life, in your past life. Look how God has kept you, kept you safe thus far, and brought you through tragedy, even when you've lost another, or you've lost a loved one through death, parents, or maybe even a relationship uh, crisis you didn't deserve. But God still brought you through it. And David said, God will bring you through everything else that comes into the future. David says, God's preeminent, preeminence is our security. Preeminence means that he's the only living God, the only power, the only source through which we must and can reach out to for our help in troubled times. So look at what he's done. And, and, and look what he's doing now. Uh, look, investigate, begin to look through the eyes of the Holy Spirit through the eyes of Jesus Christ in your life. Look and see what he's doing now, even as we speak here in this very moment. Look at who he is. God omnipotent, God's omnipresence, God's omniscience. He's everything, um, everything we need today. He is the preeminence of our Christian life. David says that he makes all things stop, he makes all things go. He causes nations uh, to, to stop wars. He, he burns up weapons in a symbolical spiritual sense. He can calm that same battle going on in our hearts today, the trouble that we have. He can calm everything. And, and uh, Psalm 46.10 says, be still. Just be still. Be still and know. And that word know is, is called gnosis, and it means to be knowledgeable of things. So we as Christians will have will need to investigate, become knowledgeable, but more important than knowledge or anything else we discover, we must be faithful to a living God and trust him beyond the crisis we're presently involved in. So 
So David says, God's preeminence is our security. Getting still, be still and know that he is God. He said, I will be exalted. God will be exalted. Exalted. So along with the scriptures, exalt God in your life today. Um, exalt God and become aware of everything that God wants to do and is doing in our lives today in the midst of all struggles, all troubles. Remember, God is your protection. God is your presence. And God is your preeminence. God bless you. And go with him and be true to him today and trust in him to be your refuge and your strength. God bless you. Have a great day.